Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very special guest. This has been a long time coming. I have Benjamin Minku from the Elrond Network, uh, a project that I'm really, really fond of. And uh, I just wanted to welcome you to the channel, man. Thanks for being here. Hey, uh, really great to have this discussion and thanks for having me. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So I think the first thing that makes sense is just to give everybody an introduction about you, uh, you know, your background, how you got into crypto, etc. Um, sure. So initially, I stumbled into Bitcoin sometime in 2013 um, and decided that this was one of um, the very, very fascinating um, ideas that was combining both technology and economics in a way that has not been done ever before. Um, so I went deep down the rabbit hole, studied um, everything I could around the subject, discovered both the longer term implications of, of the technology and then immediately after that um, some uh, interesting limitations um, and so um, I, I was in a kind of a larger study of what what was um, extremely interesting as a technology that could have large consequences or impact on, on society uh, was studying different type of technologies and I always discovered that whenever you um, discover something like this at the very inception, um, there are very, very few people that see this. But then as time goes by, a new reiteration happens that tries to improve on this. So I immediately um, joined the NEM core team um, where, where I contributed in, in some significant ways. Um, and then in 2016, together with my brother, I essentially started a, a fund with which or through which I invested in probably more than 30 um, architecture startups in the blockchain space that I thought would solve some of the problems that were um, very pressing. And after about one and a half years, um, seeing that none of the startups could deliver what, what was really needed at that point, um, we gathered the strongest team possible uh, with engineers from with the back, technical backgrounds from some of the most um, important tech startups in the world, PhDs in computer science, artificial intelligence, and, and so forth. And with them, um, started uh, to work on Elrond on a kind of breakthrough solution that would solve um, the uh, fundamental performance problem in a way where it would be very, very analogous to the transition from dial-up to broadband that we've seen in the early internet days. So this is how Elrond started. Um, and the, the idea and goal with Elrond is that we're trying to build this high bandwidth, low latency, transparent financial system, which should be an alternative to the current financial system or a complementary um, uh, model to the current financial system and then um, give anyone anywhere easy access to this financial system because we believe both these elements have the potential to uh, on the one hand significantly improve the speed and rate of our current economy it would just mean that you, you shift 10 years up and the economy is almost instant global um, works at a very low transaction cost and then if you can, in addition, connect the, the last 1.7 billion people that have absolutely no access to financial um, infrastructure, um, the, the next period will, will literally be an, an explosion of economic growth. So this is why we're super, super excited about Elrond. Yeah, and you can tell um, you're super passionate about the vision, which, you know, people are like, oh, well, that's obvious. But there are a lot of times where it's it's evident that there's there's a more financial motivation behind a project or maybe some there's I'm not saying it's negative but not, maybe not everyone's passionate about the the real reasons that we're here and and that being said you know could you talk a little bit about some of those high performance um high throughput decisions that were made in the design of, of elrond and, and its architecture i think people would be really curious to hear that Sure. So uh, again, uh, going back to the, the fundamentals, uh, we believe that um, blockchain has been here for more than um, 10, 12 years, but it has largely been in the dial-up era. Uh, we've seen some interesting um, proof of concepts 
but no widespread adoption. And the question is, why haven't we seen widespread adoption? And I think the answer is twofold. On the one hand, we ha we've had this fundamental performance problem uh, when you can process something like seven to 15 transactions per second at the global scale, this is, this is a toy. Uh, of course, it's an, a very interesting toy uh, that, that you'll like to play with, <laughs> but you cannot accommodate widespread adoption on, on this type of um, architecture. And then secondly, and equally important, um, th there's a very, very terrible user experience plague in, in the blockchain space. So it's like people are really blind to how painful it is for the normal user, the average user to work with private keys, public keys and, and so forth. And maybe we'll touch on both of those, but coming back to, to your question, um, understanding that the fundamental limitation that we'll run into and um, uh, hit our heads were, with uh, will be this kind of performance limitation. We um, did a very deep research in terms of what could actually be um, the, the solutions that we really need then second, what would be what would we need starting from a first principle standpoint? If you forget any type of limitations that we're uh, working with, what would be the ideal scenario uh, that we would like to have so we can really uh, just build the technology and focus on the use cases without um, running into any type of uh, problems? And so the reasoning went as follows. Uh, there were different incremental improvements that we could um, optimize, through which we could optimize throughput or processing capacity, um, transaction costs, um, and, and then speed. And it turns out that if you don't have high throughput, you basically die. Uh, your own success um, will kill you at, at some point because you will be sort of suffocated uh, by, by this success, uh, you, you gradually reach a point where people are super frustrated and then uh, we'll, we'll move beyond you. And so uh, the, the idea here has been to um, come up with a solution that offers at least a three order of magnitude improvement. So at least 1000 X improvement in throughput execution speed and transaction costs such that if in uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, for instance, you have around seven transactions per second uh, with this type of cost that we have right now, which any day can be even, even higher. Um, uh, and then in Ethereum, you can process something like 15 transactions per second. In Elrond, you start from somewhere um, like um, 15,000 transactions per second. But it's very important to understand that Elrond is one of the uh, only architecture at this point, which has this idea of adaptivity built in, which is extremely difficult to recreate and, and almost impossible for an architecture that doesn't have this type of adaptivity built in from an architectural standpoint, which actually means that with each new shard, we can scale a, another four to 5,000 transactions per second so that if we need it, we can very fast scale upwards of hundreds of thousands of transactions per second without any change in the design because we have this already built in. Um, so this is why we believe once we have solved this problem, we will just be able to focus on the use cases without having to discuss about performance. Um, just as in the broadband era of the internet, once you have sufficiently high, band high bandwidth, and uh, sufficiently low latency, no one discusses about the performance. You just say it's it's pretty cool. Let's focus on the cool stuff. Let's let's add new products, more interesting products, more useful products because the the fundamental economics and performance metrics um, really make sense. So this is why I believe this year will be fundamentally very different than what we've seen in the previous years because businesses have a different playground to to build uh, to adopt the technology and here um, Elrond is of course um, leading the way um, because 
this technology, and I, and I want to stress this, is not something that we'll have in the future. It's live now. Uh, of course, there are many other architectures that are promising something. Um, and, and even Ethereum, uh, historically speaking, has been three years of, uh, in the future, has been um, having this kind of launch of ETH 2.0. Now, of course, I'm, I, I believe both Bitcoin and Ethereum have their merits. They, they brought significant contributions, and this is not a discussion between us and them. Rather, we're, we're, we're seeing Elrond as the complementary set within this ecosystem that um, will try to enable a, a great adoption wave. So this is, this is the overview and the rationale for the performance um, improvement. Then um, if, you, if you want, we can um, dive into some more elements, but the key elements are adaptivity. So adaptive state sharding means that you can parallelize transaction processing, divide the network into smaller shards so that each shard can process transaction in parallel rather than in a serialized manner. And then the second element is secure proof of stake, where you have um, proof of stake as opposed to proof of work as a consensus mechanism. And then uh, you have uh, very rapid transaction processing um, and um, high security due to random sampling of the consensus group. Um, so happy, happy to dive more into that. And then um, if, you, if you want, and then maybe also touch on the um, UX standpoint, and uh, why I believe this may be an even larger problem with a larger opportunity if it's solved right. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I think that the one, one thing in particular that you said, I think is particularly important for people to understand. And that is that you built this out based on first principles an analysis of of the very base level problems and then re-architected something new based off the lessons learned from ethereum on the lessons learned from bitcoin and built something that has at the fundamental layer the ability to do what it is that you imagined would solve the problems and, and i think that when people ask like okay why is this product protocol taking so long to build uh, why is you know why is the team not able to deliver on this deadline that they said they would they're going to deliver on it's because it's better to do these things in a way that has long-term architectural foundations than to just put something out there and then realize you made a mistake. Um, and, and I think the first principles approach applies also to UX. And I am also a user of the new Myar uh, mobile wallet, the application that was launched, uh, I guess now over, well over uh, you know, a month ago, maybe more. I am a huge fan of it. I would love for you to talk about the UX approach that you've you've taken at Elrond as well. Um, sure. Again, the idea here was that understanding, um, uh, trying to, to reason what would be the most fundamental obstacle for widespread adoption and looking very closely at the current state, uh, it was clear to us that if we would not have a UX that is at least comparable to what we have in the normal Web2 space, um, then, then we would basically not be able to, to uh, move forward. And um, then looking at both the early internet days and the current uh, space, we, we basically understood that if it were not for the browser, we would not be here. Because the browser you see um, fundamentally simplified everything for the end user. It allowed them to just browse the web, just surf everything, although they might not understand the different complexities, protocols, and so forth that were used there. Um, it was at the end of the day, not necessary for them to, to be able to use the internet. And so uh, I believe that um, currently the largest elephant in the room is the fact that we're only focusing on this very very narrow group of people that we currently have in the space, which is about 100 million um, users. But the, the, the really large and obvious fact should be that we have almost 8 billion people in the world. And these people would happily start participating in this new and exciting ecosystem if things would be simple enough for them to participate. And so, um, Taking this one step further, we put a lot of thought into what this would mean in practice. Um, and, and I cannot stress enough 
how difficult it is to uh, build two of these elements, uh, very tricky elements at the same time. So just building the Elrond architecture and, and delivering um, has been uh, sort of a, a walk through hell from a pain and, and difficulty standpoint. Yeah. Uh, but then it was almost like um, you, you would do nightmare squared when you're trying to do a, a second element that's, again, fundamental, and then you care a lot about what's, uh, what's being built there. So coming maybe to Mayar, um, the idea with Mayar is to have the simplest interaction with blockchain technology uh, for the average end user. Um, and the reason for that, again, is that if we can make things extremely simple so that you don't have to understand anything about the blockchain space, you don't have to understand protocols, private keys, other stuff like that. You just can taste the benefits immediately of what it means to transfer money anywhere in the world at a very, very low price, uh, incomparable to anything that uh, you would have. And then um, using this with your friends um, and then using it with several currencies at first, uh, it would be almost obvious to you why this technology would be needed in the world. When you have a username on top of that, which we call a hero tag, um, then it really is almost common sense from a standpoint. Everything I'm saying here is not, not even groundbreaking. It should be so common sense that it's surprising uh, it has not been done for, for so much time. So of course, at the end of January, we launched Mayar. Um, we grew very, very rapidly for, for any type of blockchain um, uh, interface. So we have across something like 266,000 users um, in a very short time span. Uh, we are pushing super hard on this front, testing a lot of things. But of course, we just um, launched staking, which is by far the simplest version of staking in the entire ecosystem uh, with more than 20,000 users participating in staking um, in a new protocol. This is, this is tremendously exciting because it shows you a bit how the user behave, um, what their, their uh, interest, curiosity is, and it's just a starting point. There are a lot of really cool features. Um, if you think about DeFi and NFTs, um, that there have been, again, these two fundamental problems applied to them. Performance, if you don't have performance, DeFi is just a simple game that you play with another 10 people. And this has been the DeFi space in, in a nutshell. A very few people that understand different things. Then if you want to scale it and put it at a global scale and let everyone start playing the game, it's very important to have a fundamental basis that's, that's compelling. And then secondly, imagine what DeFi would be if you can onboard millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions and billions of users. Uh, this is how the world, uh, I believe, will look during the next period, not, not in years, but this year. Uh, and and um, this is why, again, we're very, very excited, N not even mentioning um, NFTs, which um, I believe, um, just in a nutshell, again, NFTs will do for artists what startups did for tech, tech people. So it will give them a fundamental uh, outreach and impact incomparable to, to anything else that has existed, especially natively digital, right? So this will be the superpower of our, our artists. Um, and we'll probably see with this type of wave, um, the, the largest blockchain adoption just because culture will absorb this technology. Once the artists can play yeah. and tell better stories through this technology, they will tell the stories um, that will make you love the technology and will drive it in your home, um, on TV and everywhere else, just because um, it really helps and it really improves a lot of people's lives. So i um, happy to, to touch on more points, but um, we're, we're very, very excited both for, for Elrond and 
for Maiar, but even more excited of all these cool things that are coming right now, whether it's the DeFi 2.0 module with uh, a swap, with the landing platform, synthetics, launchpad, and, and so forth. And uh, with the fact that Maiar will have this integrated as a, as a second element and, and NFTs. So it's, it's almost like um, it's an endless stream of um, excitement and entertainment that, that we can uh, push for. So epic. Epic indeed. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at it, it's, it's like uh, embracing the idea of composability in across all the different pieces of the Elrond ecosystem. It's, you know, when you implement DeFi on the L1, on the Elrond network, you can enable users to utilize those DeFi protocols easily from Myar. And then those new users drive more resources to create better DeFi, you know, DeFi decentralized applications. And that, you know, that I think is a, a difficult balance to strike, but that's why I've been, um, you know, an admirer of Elrond for a while now. And it's definitely good to hear about the vision. But, you know, as we, you know, sort of come to a natural conclusion, I would love to hear from you maybe like what to expect from Elrond in terms of, of developments in the balance of 2021 like where where do you see the path going other than what we already discussed about adoption um i i do believe that uh one of the most underestimated elements um is the fact that everything we see as either a, a metric whether whether it's prices because people love to look at at the prices elements market caps and so forth is a function of users. So the question should always be, is there a new category of users, a new community of users, a new group of users that we can onboard? Because if we can do that, uh, I believe we will see a growth, uh, a speed of growth that will be unparalleled to anything we've experienced. and and. Granted that in the blockchain space, things have been uh, fundamentally different to, to anything people have experienced in the normal and traditional um, economy and, and business sectors. Uh, even for the tech sector, it's very different. The blockchain space is uh, running at a different speed and uh, th there are even some larger opportunities, uh, I would say. But um, the next period, I believe, will focus on these two elements, building some of the Googles and Facebooks and Amazons on top of a blockchain technology that goes beyond the initial hype. So we, we see a lot of use cases that are cool, interesting and so forth, but I would love to see someone that's as passionate uh, and, and willing to go through the hell of building something extremely ambitious that that can challenge facebook that can challenge google that can challenge amazon or, or um, invent new categories that that we've not even seen yet so uh, this is one of the themes the next amazons and googles are one perhaps one smart contract away um, and contributing enabling this will be extremely um, rewarding um, and uh, extremely exciting and then the second element is the, the, the obvious thing will very likely see software eating finance for the first time, but in a way where things are natively digital, because we, we always had this transition from, uh, from, from um, a analog uh, version of, of products to a semi-digital version of products to a fully digital and na natively digital version of products. And, and um, I believe we, even with money, we had money that was physical and, and so forth. Then we had uh, this FinTech companies that were basically partly digital and partly still relying on the old uh, payment rails and, and so forth. And now we are at the point where we can, for the first time, fundamentally imagine things fully digital without having the constraints of the physical world. And um, having this possibility means that we will completely rethink money, um, 
in a way that's helpful to, to um, us, to uh, people all over the world, in a way that's accessible to anyone in the world. And whether we believe, uh, whether we're discussing like something like uh, a unit of account, a medium of exchange, a store of value, or a debt instrument, all of this are fundamentally uh, rethought and reimagined within this new space. And um, I'm already excited about this, this theme that we coined um, the autonomous banking era. Uh, so uh, the, the way that we see the, the financial space work is essentially a set of microservices that allow you to transfer, exchange, uh, lend, um, create any kind of synthetics and so forth, or launch any type of startups, projects, and so forth. Also interoperate with all this kind of new layers that uh, come out. But any nation, any institution, any bank, um, any business or startup or individual will be able to equally interact with the services, either via an interface, normal interface like Myr, or via an API. And at that point, um, you, you'll just have a, a super cycle. Um, and and um, I think people are too, because they've bur been burned at some point in the past, um, they've, they're now uh, very, very scared, uh, almost too scared when, when they see adoption, when, when they see things like prices going up and so forth, they don't look at the fundamentals. They very much just try to look, mm, prices go up, this is not good. It, it must yeah. be not good, it's, it's problematic. But the maybe interesting question is, do we have adoption? Do we have fundamentals in place to really enable the, the next wave, big wave of adoption to come in? Because if we have, what we have right now is not even 1% of uh, what, what we'll see. And uh, we, we have this thesis where we believe that this will be an, a $100 trillion opportunity for the entire ecosystem. Uh, so 100 trillion is an insane amount of money, but um, I, I do believe that what blockchain brings, as I said, both in terms of performance and in terms of accessibility to the entire world can essentially not only improve the entire economy, um, help it um, work a lot more effectively uh, across the entire spectrum, but will also create new sectors, new business models. And um, yeah, it's, it's probably the, the, the greatest time to be alive. So um, where um, I, I would really encourage um, both the technical people and the business people and the, the people in the general community to take a close look at the tools um, that we have to, to uh, just come with feedback, to make sure to test Myr. Um, a lot of new features are coming to Myr. We're going to add Bitcoin. Um, we're going to probably add some, some more other um, currencies that we believe have a fundamental value. But um, yeah, uh, other features will come in and we, we have a few that we've not, um, not even touched on, not even discussed yet because they, um, they would be, uh, yeah, too, too exciting and we, we don't sort of want to uh, push them out until they, uh, they're they ready, but it's it's a tremendous time to be alive. Absolutely. I'm, I'm extremely grateful to be able to be a part of the space as a, you know, as a young person or as an early adopter, I suppose, and, and to watch it be adopted more by the general population. And I agree with you. I think that the opportunity here is uh, well beyond the imagination of of what we've seen so far uh, and this is just the beginning and so i mean from the perspective of elrond folks that are watching if you have questions please leave them in the comments below i encourage you to do a deeper dive on on what it means download my r I'll, I'll link it up below as well and you can you know really give it a try it's it's a fantastic experience and and benjamin i want to thank you so much for being on the on the phone today and chatting with me on the channel Really awesome to have this conversation and uh, yeah, very much looking forward to hearing more feedback, um, hearing from your community and uh, let's continue the conversation. 
Absolutely. Will do. Tech, tech deep dive coming. <laughs> Thank Perfect. you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Cheers.